This is where I keep my rig. This is a standard chemical vapor deposition rig. It's set up um, so that there are the capability of four different chemicals. We can pass them all around this heated piping into our two mixing chambers, and then they come down over the glass substrate where they decompose, um, form a thin film of whatever it is we're trying to make. You know how these days some people go into hospital and whilst they're in hospital they catch these infections that make them far more ill than they were when they originally went in? Well these hospital acquired infections are a major problem for uh, modern day healthcare. What I do is I'm investigating different functional materials that can help stop the spread of bacteria in hospitals in an attempt to try and stop these healthcare associated infections. All of these are controlled by our control panel here, where we see we can actually control the individual bubblers, the two mixing chambers, which are at about um, 250 degrees at the moment. All of the lines have to be heated because um, otherwise the vapors condense in the lines and then we have blockages. And of course we can control the actual temperature of the reactor, which is at 500 degrees. What I do is I take a photocatalyst known as titanium dioxide. And this is the photocatalyst that's used on things like self-cleaning windows. And I can adapt it chemically to make it better. The problem with, with titanium dioxide is that it absorbs ultraviolet light and therefore needs to be outside. Now this is fine if you're a self-cleaning window, but inside there isn't enough ultraviolet light for them to function properly. So what I do is I take a atom or I take atoms of nitrogen and sulfur, incorporate them into the titanium dioxide framework, and I can shift the electronic properties of the material to make it absorb lower energy light, hence the visible light rather than the ultraviolet light. So we're gonna use titanium chloride as a titanium source, ethyl acetate for a oxygen source to make the titanium oxide, and then on this side we have um, carbon disulfide, which is a very good sulfur source. Now the way a photocatalyst works is it catalyzes a reaction between carbonaceous material on its surface and oxygen in the air, which is effectively like burning, but at very low temperature. On an atomic scale, bacteria really is just a bunch of carbon atoms. So the photocatalyst will actually work by simply oxidizing or burning the carbon atoms into carbon dioxide, thus killing the bacteria. The idea behind this technology is to coat hand touch surfaces, things like door handles, tap handles and loo flush handles, potentially even the walls themselves in the form of paint, can be coated with these materials and um, reduce the amount of bacterial spread from people touching them. Okay, let's actually put a deposition down. So we turn each of these on and we've now got all three gases coming down. And if you look down here, you can see the titanium chloride floating along and plowing down over the substrate. The chemical vapors will then react with each other um, and form a thin film. Everything else will be taken off into the exhaust and that thin film will remain. So here I have an example of a titanium dioxide thin film. Okay. So this is a standard piece of glass with a titanium oxide thin film. You'll see a very slight rainbow effect, and that's actually due to the thickness, not the colour of the film. The film itself is colourless. But that is a titanium dioxide film. We can now look at what happens if you incorporate a bit of nitrogen. So a very small amount of nitrogen goes into the film, and you notice there's actually a yellow colour. Now the yellow colour is actually due to the nitrogen atoms inside the TiO2 changing the electrical properties and moving the energy of the absorbed light from the ultraviolet into the top end of the visible spectrum. So we can see that this film should be a very good photocatalyst because it's absorbing the visible light as opposed to the UV light, so it should work indoors. And we can then test it using various different methods um, to prove that it actually does, including the microbiology, to see that it actually kills the bugs.